Now we come to one of my favorite topics, business process, having to do with security. Security for business processes has a number of different incarnations to it. Um, there are different things that you can control with the security model when it comes to these things. For example, you have to make a distinction between on-demand workflow processes and automatic workflow processes. On-demand workflow processes, the ability to run those for any user depends on your security role and in particular it's on the privilege that you have for the execute workflow job privilege. And by default, all security roles have a full green that is organization level. So any user would be able to run an on-demand workflow that had been authored by another user, owned by another user. And I'll show you what this means in a moment. We'll go and look at a security role and illustrate what these look like. That's on-demand workflow processes. There's another type of on-demand process that's a dialogue, and that's controlled by something different. So if you, whether you can run a dialogue process or not is determined by your security roles create privilege on the dialogue session entity. And I'll show you where that is too. So you can selectively determine whether or not a user can run either or both an on-demand workflow or create a dialogue session. Now that's running it. What about creating one of these things? whether you can create workflows or dialogue processes, that's determined by the same entity. That's the process entity. And so it's your, it's the create privilege you have on the process entity. And as I'll, sh I'll show you in a minute, that privilege is probably a little bit too generously applied. And all the default security roles in Dynamic CRM have the ability to create workflow or dialogue processes. And that's probably not a good thing. You might want to change that as a best practice, and I'll illustrate that in a moment. Now, automatic processes are different. The real issue with automatic processes, again, there's two issues here, who can create them and who will, it's not really who will run them, who will, who will trigger them. Automatic processes, um, as the name implies, are run automatically. That's when some event occurs. So the question is, if a user creates a record, for example, if I create an opportunity record, will I trigger an automatic process? And that's not determined by your security role, interestingly enough. It's determined by the scope of the process and the relative positions in the organization's business units of the owner of the workflow and of the user who may or may not trigger the process. It's a little bit complicated there. Now, Automatic processes run in the security context of the owner of the workflow process. And it turns out that all default security roles can create an automatic workflow with the scope of organization, which may or may not be a good thing. You may not want that. So you might want to remove create privilege on this process from a security role such as salesperson or customer service representative so that you can pr prohibit people from creating organization scoped workflows. Now, let's go take a look at this and we'll do it in the context of a, a scenario. I'm going to show you a user with a couple of different roles and I'm going to sign in and sign out as different users here. And I want to illustrate two things with this. So let's switch to the demo environment. So I'm signed in here as a system administrator. Let's go take a look at the security roles. And I'll show you how they determine who can do what with processes. So I'm navigating to security roles. And I've got this role right here. We're going to look at this one first. Notice this is the custom salesperson role. If you haven't worked with security roles before, what I did was, since I like to keep the default security roles unchanged, Rather than start changing, say, the salesperson security role, I made a copy of it. Copy role. And I call this custom salesperson. And when you copy a role, you get all of the original role settings, and then you can customize it from there so you're not starting from scratch. So here's the custom salesperson role that I created. And the privileges that I was talking about in the when I was speaking to the slides are on the customization tab here. And what this role does, this is kind of a locked down 
security role when it comes to processes because I wanted to show you what it looks like for a user who has this a role like this. Notice dialogue session. Here's the first one that I talked about. Notice that unlike the default roles, if you looked at the default security roles, say salesperson, some of the other roles, you'd see that this is filled in at the, the create privileges at the user level. But what I want to do is I want to turn it off so you see what it looks like when somebody can't start a dialogue session. So we've removed the create privilege from the dialogue session entity. Then we go down to process and notice that I've also removed create privilege for the process entity. That means I can't author these things. And I'll show you what that looks like. Scrolling down a little bit, we go to the miscellaneous privileges section and notice that I've also removed privilege for the execute workflow job. And notice that this is all or nothing. So if I remove it, a user will not be able to run, remember I said an on-demand workflow is what this controls. So this is a lockdown security role, but you're going to see that even with this lockdown security role, this doesn't impact a user's ability to trigger an automatic workflow. That's not controlled by the security role of the triggering user. That's controlled by the scope of the workflow and the relative positions, the organizations of the workflow owner and the user. So I'm going to save, close this role without saving it because it was the way I wanted it before. So now what I want to do to illustrate how this works, I'm going to inflict this role on poor old Rooster, my alter ego here, um, and I'll select his user record, click Manage Roles, and notice he's got this custom salesperson role. And that's the only role this user has, so it's going to be easy to understand the implications of this when I'm signed in as that user. So I'll sign out as Richard, the system administrator, and then I'll sign back in as Rooster. Okay, so here we are signed in as Rooster with my lockdown process security role. And um, I'll tour some of the same workflows and processes we've seen already to illustrate what we can and can't do. So I'll select active accounts. And if you remember from one of the earlier demos, I've got a workflow, uh, on-demand workflow that uh, does things like reset territories and things like that. So if I select that here, so let's select all the accounts, see if I can apply that workflow process. Click the process drop down. And notice that both the run workflow and the start dialog buttons are grayed out. Now you might think that's because maybe there, there aren't any, but there is. There's an active workflow that's, uh, that's activated here that if I had, remember, the, this is the um, miscellaneous privilege execute workflow job. I don't have this role doesn't have that so I can't run any on-demand workflows. That's the first thing we see there. Then let's go to contacts and remember I had a dialogue, the survey contact dialogue. So if I select a contact record, process, notice I can't run a dialogue here. That's because I don't have create privilege on the start dialogue. On the, I, don't have, I don't have any privilege for create on the um, dialogue session entity, the right way to say that. You have to repeat that a few times yourself in front of a mirror to really get it right. So, so that's that one. And then if I go to settings, processes, notice there's no create button here. That's because I removed the create, uh, removed from the security role this user has the create privilege for the process. So those are the three things that we see there. But watch what happens if I create an opportunity record. So I've got all the regular permissions of, say, the salesperson security role, apart from locking down the process access, process and dialogue, the workflow and dialogue access this user has. So I can create a new opportunity. I've got permissions to do this. And let's create one for the grand store. And I'll call this a grand project. And I'll save it. Now, if you remember from some of the earlier demos, I've got some workflows that run automatically when opportunity records are created. And some of those workflows were authored by a system administrator. 
that's the owner of the workflow and remember automatic workflows run in the context of the owner of the workflow but one of the workflows was authored by this user and that's going to run in this user's security context but regardless of whose workflow it is they're automatic workflows they both have an organization a scope of organization so they'll run for any user and notice that this user even though the user, this user doesn't have process, doesn't have privileges for dialogue sessions to create processes or to execute workflow jobs the user still will trigger automatic workflows so that's one of the that was I mentioned kind of one of the sort of complexities of this because your ability to trigger an automatic workflow is not determined by your security role that has to do with the scope of the workflow and the business unit that you are in relative to the owner of the workflow. So you can see that these workflows run. So automatic workflows will run um, for a user even without the ability to say create processes or execute workflow jobs. So that's an illustration of sort of a lockdown security role. Now I want to switch back to the administrator for a minute and show you what it looks like if a user can create a workflow and give it a scope of organization even if it's a user that you might not want to uh, create that I'm going to illustrate that with the default security role so let's sign out as this guy sign back in as the system administrator and let's give rooster the the standard salesperson security role okay picking up where we left off I signed out as Rooster, signed in as my system administrator role, and changed poor Rooster's security role. Rooster now has the standard salesperson security role. So this is not the locked down role anymore. And you can see that if I go to accounts, for example, and let's just choose active accounts. And if I choose one of these accounts, one of these account records, and choose process, notice if I click run workflow, here's my update territory and clear territory workflow so at this point I can run those automatic processes or those on-demand processes and whether or not they work for me that will be determined by, by my security roles because on-demand processes run in my security context in the current user's security context so I can run workflows and I can run dialogues and interestingly here the point that I want to illustrate is that I can also create processes remember that salesperson security role has user level create privilege on processes so I could create for example this personal sales process and let's uh, open it deactivate it so the scenario here is maybe I've, I've created this process and what I want to do is every time an opportunity record is created notice it's got the start when record is created I'm gonna assign it to me now this could easily be done inadvertently it's not like um, everybody in the world just intuitively knows exactly how the process designer works but it could also be done um, what's the opposite of it inadvertently advertently uh, it's the sort of thing you might want to avoid and notice that this thing has a scope of organization the point is there's nothing in your security role that locks down your ability to set the scope. When you create a process, if you've got the ability to create process, you can create an organization scoped process, which means this will run for everybody in the organization when they create an opportunity record. So if I save and close this thing and activate it, nothing prevents me from doing that. So now a salesperson has created a automatic workflow that reassigns or at least attempts to reassign every opportunity record to that person. So will it work? Well, let's see. I'll sign out and sign back in as somebody else, create an opportunity record, and then we'll see what happens. Now I'm signed in again as the system administrator user, and let's create an opportunity record and see what happens with the workflow, the automatic workflow that the salesperson created that will run, but it may or may not run correctly. Big projects take a little longer to close. Click Save. And if I talk for a minute or two, or even 
10 or 15 seconds, the workflows will have a chance to run. So remember, I'm the system administrator here. I created a new opportunity record. The question is, will it get triggered? It does. So notice that that personal sales process, it is fired. So that salesperson, the owner of that process, it's Rooster, the guy who authored the process, and it's waiting, which may or may not be a good thing. If I open it up, you'll see in this case it's probably a good thing that it's waiting. It's, it's a little confusing because it's saying you do not have enough privileges to access the Microsoft Dynamics CRM object. It's not talking to me. I am the CRM administrator. It means that the owner of this workflow doesn't have enough privileges. So in this case, the salesperson security role allows a user to create an organization scoped workflow. It will run for everybody in the organization when they perform whatever triggering action that is. But in this case, it breaks because the user doesn't have privileges via their security role to reassign opportunity records like that. They only have user level assigned privilege for opportunity records. So that's a good thing that it's limited by the security role in this case, but it's probably a bad thing that that user can create one of these organization scoped workflows in the first place. So what I would recommend is removing the create privilege for process for users like that and then have a custom security role for say power users that might you might uh, sort of selectively apply to users that really do need to create those uh, types of things and um, can be properly trained and all that sort of thing. So that's a pretty good uh, summary, I think, of the kind of the main issues that come up uh, with respect to security for dialogue and workflow processes in CRM 2011.